Twitter and Facebook pages. Yeah, all right, it is uh, Wednesday Night Rugby at uh, 1.38 on this uh, Wednesday afternoon and uh, we are here in partnership with Air Sport. Tommy Bow is the new presenter of Air Sport's uh, Guinness Pro 14 2018-19 coverage. Air Sport's uh, first broadcast is going to be Leinster up against Cardiff Blues. It's on Friday night. It'll be uh, free to air as well on uh, all Sky Satellite uh, customers to celebrate the channel becoming the new home of rugby in Ireland. The game will also be available to view on Air Sports Facebook, Twitter and YouTube social media channels. The face of the broadcast, as I said, is Tommy Bowen. I'm delighted to say <laughs> Tommy joins us in the studio. Good, Good to see you, Tommy. Excellent. Thank you. Cheers for having me in. At what point is it appropriate to change your social media uh, description? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I've done it yet. You haven't? No. You're still I don't really uh, know what I am Irish. yet. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really worked out exactly what uh, what I turn it into yet. So I'm still a rugby player until yeah. Um, yeah I must actually do that. Shouldn't that's I? that's the that's in in terms of stuff that you want uh, interviewees to say to you in the opening gambits of an yeah. interview. I'm not really sure what I am yet. Is up there in the top three. Well, that's it. Um, I mean, I've got a few things going on, which is keeping do? me really busy, which yeah. is great. I think. Leading up to my retirement, I suppose I was very fortunate in retiring that I was able to go out on my own terms. I kind of made my own decision, uh, made this decision back, I suppose, at the start of last season. So all last season, I enjoyed my rugby. I, I really enjoyed it, actually, because I took all the pressure off myself and mm. um, tried to make, make the most out of every minute I got in the pitch and with all the guys around it. But also gave me a great opportunity to try and prepare for life after rugby and, and having played for as long as I have, to have seen so many guys who had to retire early or had to lose out on contracts or you know any amount of different things, to be able to go out and make your own decision, walk away and have a few bits and pieces to keep you busy, you know, I'm very fortunate. There wasn't any doubts about it then, was there? I mean, if you've made your piece that early and you enjoyed it so much, yeah. was there any part of you going, Jesus... I could have just adopted this as a new approach and <laughs> yeah. actually get another couple of seasons. I wish I had a thought that. I would think. I wish I had a taken a bit. of... I think early on in my career, I was very much tried to you know play with a smile on my face, enjoy it, relax. But when the injuries kept coming back, you know, it almost it adds a bit of extra pressure on you. You come back from injury, you want to get back to that level. It takes a bit longer. So the the last the I suppose about four. four three or four seasons before I did retire, I found it difficult because I was I was trying to get myself into the Ulster team, trying to get myself into the Irish team. Mm. You know, your body wasn't feeling 100% um, and it does play in your mind where last year um, I just wiped all that out. If I messed up in a game, messed up in training, didn't care, and yeah, it was great. I actually do wish I did it maybe for a few more years. Yeah, all right. Well, look, get your uh, questions in for Tommy over the next while. We'll be bringing those to you uh, towards the end of the conversation. Feel free to get those in on uh, the Facebook page, YouTube, wherever it is you uh, consume us. We have some pretty cool prizes as well to give away. Some more details on that uh, in a little bit. But um, Tommy, the obviously transition from sort of rugby player to what you're doing now is a significant one. And you've done obviously amazing bits of punditry uh, over the last <laughs> little while um, and other bits of TV. Presenting, but this is it's very different, isn't it? The yeah. what you're about to jump into here, yeah, live television. Yeah. yeah, I'm a little bit worried about it, but no, I'm, I'm excited, I'm really excited. I think a few years ago, I was trying to think what, what, where do I want to go, uh, what do I want to do after rugby. And there is the punditry role, which is which is available to a lot of players whenever they do retire, and that's something I've enjoyed. And those few chances that I've got a chance to do it, it's great to give a bit of an insight. Great to be at matches. Great to be involved and in talk about the game. But for me, you know, I wanted to make something a little bit more long term, and I think that looking into presenting, looking into broadcasting, is a whole new challenge. Mm. Something that I'm only starting to learn, you know, between auto cue, actually learning to read again and read <laughs> out loud. I mean, who does that anymore? <laughs> as you're talking to your kids, yeah. um, feedback in the ear, having you know, three, four, five different people talk. So it's yeah, totally uh, new challenge. Um, but I'm getting the opportunity to to go back to get pitch side for the Munster match this weekend uh, to to cover the Leinster against Cardiff this weekend to cover the whole Pro 14. 
you know, it's it's kind of it's where I wanted to be. It's come really fast, mm. but I'm really really excited about it, and I think I'm in a good position for it. I bumped into a, a mole, an insider earlier on who said he's a natural. Was the, uh, the expression <laughs> they used? So you can take good comfort from that. Uh, do you think will you bring any of your like punditry to the presenting role, or like what what how are you going to make it your own, or how do you see that sort of panning out? Yeah, at the at the start, I think it's it's important for me to just kind of get used to it, get into it, and and get rolling. I'd say probably one of my biggest challenges will be the fact that I want to give a little bit more information that. Um, you know, in talking to Dunica and Luke, you mm -hmm. know, I will, I will know what they're talking about. I'll, I'll have been in those meetings. I'll be, have been on the pitch. So, for me to almost step back and to be able to ask the questions and lead it uh, will be, will be kind of a bit of a learning curve for me because, you know, I'll, I'll want to give input. I'll want to try and. Uh, give my say, but I think it's important to try and step back as well to listen to what they're saying and try and give small bits of input and also guide it mm. in 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 the knowledge that I have. You know, having been on the pitch, say this weekend with Cardiff Blues in the Cardiff Arms Park, and you know, I played in that synthetic pitch. Mm. I, I know, you know, what a great surface it is like to play on. How amazing it is to run out through that tunnel there. How small the change rooms are. Mm. So small bits of feedback like that, I think, will hopefully. Uh, help the viewer and, and, and I suppose add a little ele element that I can add to it. What sort of a consumer of rugby are you generally anyway? Are you the sort of guy who's at home sort of with the notepad out looking at it in that way anyway or what's your are you more of like what, what's your general sort of consumption level when you're um, My dad and my wife well my wife doesn't watch it much with me but if she does watch rugby hates it because I have the Sky remote. I can't help but just rewind back. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I never watch it live. It's always yeah. two or three minutes behind. So I'm you're rewinding back. I look forever just, um, I suppose it's ingrained into us. You know, we watch, we do so much video analysis now. There's so many intricacies to, to teams, plays, to moves, to, you know, off the ball things. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I tend to just watch it, rewind back, watch it again, rewind back. So it, yeah, for, for anybody else, you know, my neighbour, Mike, lives across the road from me. I kind of say, come on, we watch the Ireland match. He's like a and grass. He's, <laughs> he's actually turned down the last two. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and like, what, so what are you looking out for? Is it you're, you're watching specific things maybe and sort of going back to see, is that exactly as I saw it? Or like, what are you, what are you rewinding for? Yeah, there's so much going on in the game of rugby now. Um, and for me, you know, I'm not trying to teach anybody, it's for me to learn. So I'm actually watching, you know, for instance, in Ireland and the Six Nations last year, I, I wasn't involved in it. So I got to watch it and to see some of the small little changes that Joe has added to different moves, to plays, to game plans. Um, when I'm watching Leinster to see things that Johnny and Rob do that I, I know that they've done for years, but that they've, you know, teams constantly evolve, constantly change things. And you know, being there, um, being a part of it, you know, you will get left behind, so it's a case of trying to stay on top of it. Yeah, that is difficult, because we obviously work with a bunch of uh, uh, professional and oh, yeah. amateur uh, sports people that have come out the other side of the game, and that challenge of sort of, there's an immediate relevancy for a year or two years afterwards, and then exactly like you are saying, the thing moves on so quickly, Very quick. but actually that challenge of sort of, and you, you don't always want to be on to your former teammates or coaches kind of going, oh, hey, like, what's happening there? I mean, well, I don't know I think if so. I think that having a good relationship with them, and that's something that Air Sport are very keen on doing, that we want to push the game, we want to push the Pro 14, and we want to put, push Irish rugby. So for us, we're not trying to hang out the provinces. We want to get access to them. We want to turn up at training. We want to get the guys to come and give us interviews and give us little nuggets, because that's what the viewers want to see. And we want to try and promote them mm. and make it as enjoyable as we can for them. So yeah, I think in, in, in the past, some of the provinces are maybe a little bit protected because they don't want to give away too many secrets. But for us, having the likes of myself, Dunica, Luke, you know, we're quite open. We're still very friendly with a lot of the guys. So I think it'll give us a good opportunity to, to get a little bit of insider information and, and try and give it out to the, the general public. Where are you at on the Pro 14? There was, I know there was a lot of debate about it over the last, even over the last week as the launch happened and yeah. we're sort of on the brink of the start of the tournament again and there was a couple of scathing pieces written about it at the weekend. Yeah. Like it has over the years copped a lot of flack. They're clearly doing a bunch of work to try and sort of take it on to the next level. But your relationship with the Pro 14 or where are you at on it as a tournament? I think it's a fantastic tournament. It is, of course, 
owned by the unions, so it's the, it's very much a part of trying to get the players playing, but at the same time they have to have this player management. And I think that in the bigger picture, you know, there's a lot of talk about the Pro 14, but there's even more talk about uh, players' injuries, player welfare, you know, the likes of Sam Warburton having to retire early, mm -hmm. uh, people like Ty Byrne having to play, you know, 30, almost 40 games last season. Uh, Anthony Watson's come out and talked about trying to reduce the player, you know, the amount of games the players play. So I think with the Pro 14, with the unions having a bit of a say on it, it's a great opportunity to bring through young players like, uh, I suppose, Dan Levy, who had an outstanding last season, Jordan Larmer, um, it, Wooten from, from Munster. You know, so many guys are getting an opportunity, young fellas, that maybe not in the Champions Cup that they'll get the opportunity to play in those big games. So I think that it's a great breeding ground. It's a great opportunity for young fellas to come through. And obviously in the big games, whenever Munster are playing Leinster or you have the Scarlets playing against Munster, you know, these are big, big games. You want to be, you want to be winning those. And, and the top teams, it shows the teams that have the, the biggest squads, you know, the, the most rounded squads are the teams that really go well in it. You have a good history with it. Have you? Did, were you part of the Ospreys team that would have yeah. won? Was it the RDS one of the years? Won it twice, yeah. I, I missed the final for the, the second time, I think, it's when Dan Baker kicked it from the in corner. The RDS, yeah. When Leicester yeah. were sort of heavy favourites to win it, I think. Yeah, Shane Williams scored two tries in his last last game and Dan Bigger kicked it from the corner. So yeah. I was there watching. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't playing, but... Yeah, well, I think we won twice with the Ospreys, both in Leinster, right, so yeah. it's yeah. nice for them not to win everything all the time anyway. <laughs> and then they get they the, the bloody Le success. Leinster bogey team, they get called, as opposed to like actually just being a good, successful team. Yeah, yeah. well that's, but I mean, even look at Munster, you know, they made two semi-finals last year, mm. and it's almost uproar that the, the, to not have won anything, to not have made a final. It just shows that the standard that they hold themselves at, that they should be winning trophies, to make it to two semi-finals is nothing to be sneered at yeah. but um, I think that the work that they've done over the over the summer some of the players have brought in really good squad for this season An 18 year old Tommy Bow is coming into the game now sort of casting your uh, your actual career to one side for a second Leech and forgetting about the uh, for, yeah 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 I was watching watch some of that earlier on today actually because somebody had one of the comments we had in earlier when we said you were coming in was uh, to ask Tommy about um, yeah that's not the, yeah <laughs> actually it wasn't about the it wasn't about the the highlights it was okay. about the Brian O'Driscoll Pass to himself. Oh, yeah. uh, also at the RDS when, when you're when you're Ulster. Yeah, yeah. Still, he threw it over Dennis Hickey's head. I think. No, he threw it over my head. Over your head. Yeah. yeah okay. Now he still tracked him back. <laughs> you did. You him, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody forgets that. Um, it was. Yeah. If that you're was, coming into the game now, what are you? In terms of the various provinces, where would you see a 18 year old Tommy Bow coming in to be excited about sort of coming into one of those provinces? Where would you like to go? What team yeah. do? You, I think it's very much about what team will I get into as well. Uh, certainly the back three is so strong around all three, four provinces. Um, listen, for me, growing up in Monaghan, of course, I went to school in Armagh. My, my obvious, I was always going to go to Ulster. Um, but in terms of like the, the various backlines, obviously there's a few developments at Munster that are quite exciting. Yeah. I mean, Leinster, the reigning champions, some developments at Ulster as well. But in terms of the dynamic almost that's there, where would you see a, a you know, 18, Isn't 20 year old Tommy Bowe? I think that with what Munster have done this year, I think it's it's very exciting for them. Uh, with Simon Zio, Zebo stepping away, it's going to yeah. be a big opportunity there at 15. Haley coming in from Sale, uh, Conway. A couple of young guys might get an opportunity to play there. Who knows, Joey Carberry might play there. Um, for me, <laughs> listen, it's the double champions in Leinster. Mm -hmm. How could you not want to play in that team? With the pack that they have, the front f uh, football that they get, I mean, that's, that's a dream it's for dream, a winger. Yeah. I mean, a winger wants to get the ball in the front foot where you're attacking all the time. So... Uh, yeah, th listen all You're going for Leinster, Tommy. That, that's, no, that's, that's it what kills I hear. me that's to say that. No. I was surprised to hear, I, I tuned in the other day when you were, um, yourself and uh, Donica and Luke and Maz were talking about um, Joey Carberry and mm -hmm. you just mentioned it there and where he might be at Munster. Uh -huh. I was surprised to hear you sort of, there was general rough consensus that maybe 15 will be an avenue for him. I mean, I just assumed that he's going to 10 and the com uh, going to Munster to play 10 and the conversations are that's where you're going to play. Yeah, of course. I would imagine so. But Luke, it was particularly Luke, was was uh, was very keen on saying that he thinks that 15 is his best position. Um, 
there's no doubt about it that there was a call between Joe Schmidt and Joey Carberry that if he wants to be involved in, in the Ireland mm. Six Nations and World Cup, he needs to get more time at uh, playing at 10. So, yes, I would say the, for the start of the season, it's his opportunity. I mean, the 10 jersey is his to lose. Uh, and for he's still a young guy, you know. He's twenty two. There's a lot of pressure on his on his shoulders. I think that he is an incredible talent. Uh, I just hope, and I know that it was what something that Donica said. I just hope that that pressure coming down to Munster, that the supporters and everybody just thinks that he's just going to be the finished article. You know, he's going to take time to bed in. He will have a great team, a great pack around him that will look after him. He'll have Conor Murray. Obviously, going to miss the first few games, but Conor Murray, the talent that he has to try and help him and bring him on. I would love to see him playing at 10. I hope that he really relishes the, to the opportunity to play at 10. But when you have JJ Hanrahan, you have Tyler uh, Blumenthal, you have um, Ian Keatley there, you know, it's, there's no guarantee he's just going to walk on there. I think at the start of the season, yes, it's there for him to lose. And I just hope he takes it. He's a young guy. He's got so much promise. Um, and good luck to him. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because I know we spoke to Stuart Lancaster last year and he was kind of saying, look, there's no need to sort of box this guy into a position just yet, but it almost feels, I don't know, this is my view on it clearly and I ain't the expert here, but um, it almost feels like now might be the time to sort of box him into that role and like you're saying, he hasn't played very much at 10. And The like, worst thing a player can be is to be a utility player. If yeah. they have genuine ambitions to make a position their own for, say, the national team. I look at particularly a guy, James Hook, who I used to play with in the Ospreys, probably the one of the most naturally gifted players I've ever played with. He could put the ball in his left foot for a grubber, right foot, passes, blind passes, incredible. Mm -hmm. But the problem with him, people couldn't work out whether he was a 10, a 12 or a 15 and he, he spent week to week going between all three positions. And and if you don't get an opportunity to nail it, and I, I know myself, I've yeah. played a lot on the wing at 15 and at 13. And getting thrown in for one game is great, but you need a, a run of games to, to kind of just get yourself used to it. So for me, it, it would be very important for Joey to be given that 10 jersey and let him have a good crack at it to, up until November and, and see how he goes. Is it Was it frustrating when you're sort of in that position and <clears throat> you're not getting your preferred position almost? I know... When you're playing for Ireland or your provinces, you just want to you want to get the shirt. And yeah, that's accepted. But, but at the same time, was there a frustration of Jesus? Just give me a run of games. Well, you need to. Uh, it's it's and it's unfortunately it's the way the game is going now, which is incredible to see how teams are so successful with it, it with the player rotation. Mm. For me, as my career went on, I did like a bit of player rotation because it gave me my body a bit of a rest. But certainly at the start of my career, just get me out there, play me, play me, play me, because. You have to get up to speed. You have to, you know, it doesn't Learn just come to intricacies you. of your position. And there's only uh, so much you can do in training. Uh, training is incredible. The intensity that you train now is like match match speed, but nothing can compare mm -hmm. to being in a match situation. So a run of games, like anybody with any sport. It's, it's, I suppose, crucial. Yeah. Uh, all right, we have a bunch of comments coming in. The uh, Heineken Star comment of the week is back. We've lots of uh, cool prizes to give away, match tickets, uh, Heineken merch, and some lovely off-the-ball branded Heineken bottles as well. So they're all uh, coming to some lucky winner at the end of the week, depending on the best question of the week. So we'll get a couple of them to Tommy now. One sort of a straight bat question here on Instagram from Tractor Mad. Oh, Tractor Mad, uh, great. Tommy, which I'm sure... Massey is, or, uh, <laughs> Massey or John Deere, it's is short, it? It's a short handle. Okay. What do you think Ulster can achieve this season? Um, I mean, getting through a season without any sort of adverse headlines, obviously, would be... Yeah, uh, would yeah. Be a step well, I think it's been relatively positive headlines since they've started, but they've lost... You know, they've lost a huge amount of experience in that squad, particularly in the back line. You know, you look at, I mean, Ruan Pinar left two seasons ago, and you have Paddy Jackson, you have Stuart Olding, you have Jared Payne, myself, Trimby, Charles Pietau, uh, Paul Marshall. A lot of experience mm -hmm. there. Um, but in talking to the likes of Dwayne Peel, who's the backs coach up there, the likes of Billy Burns, Will Addison, um, there's a lot of promise. They, they're expecting big things, particularly from those two guys, mm. Marcel Coutia back playing. It is, it, they have a very difficult European group. It's going to be tough for them. They're going to try and bed through as many youngsters as they can over the season. I would say it'll be a season that they'll be trying to get mid-table, mid-to-top mm. table if they can, but it's a case of trying to get through as many 
academy guys and see see whether they can and can cut it. A few Leinster voices in there as well, obviously, for the yeah, season ahead. Yeah, so. which is good too. And I think the likes of Jordy Murphy with the season, certainly the end of the season he had, you know, that experience, uh, having been part of a Leinster culture to come up to Ulster, um, I think he'll add a lot. Marty Moore, obviously, as well. And then a couple of the other Leinster guys who are, who are already there. Uh, YouTube, John McRae says, do you plan on coaching in the future? Like, there's been, looking at it, there's some of your sort of contemporaries over the years, not a huge amount, but certainly some, mm. Raj, obviously Paul O'Connell, Garvin Dempsey, that would have taken that route. Like, it's not a, it doesn't seem like a, a mass market necessarily for... A lot of them generations. are going to the lower levels or coaching at kind of club or mm. underage or, or academy. And I think that's important to try and jump in at the top levels, obviously. Mm. Going to be difficult. For me, coaching has never been an option. Really? Um, it's never been something... Listen, I loved, I loved to play games. I loved games, running out onto that pitch, getting the ball in your hands, you know, getting the opportunity to score a try. Nothing will ever match that. Mm. I hated training. Really, right, okay. I didn't like, hate what about it. it? The, the physicality of it or the... Uh, it's like... Everything. It's like... I, I don't know, the, the office part of the job, you know, you've right. got to do it to get to the game. It was always... Um, I've never been the best at training. And like, so did that include stuff like tactical sessions or video breakdowns? And listen, I, listen. it wasn't one particular... Well, if there's one particular train, it's pre-season. I mean, I will never <laughs> miss a pre-season and I've never been great at pre-season, so I won't miss that ever. But just training in general and the wet and cold and it's... Listen, it beats, it beats certain jobs. I did construction engineering, so I mean, ah, right. it would have been probably sitting out <laughs> on the roof uh, at that level. But to be a coach and have to actually stand there in the wet and rain and watch people train... Yeah, miserable. I couldn't think of getting worse. Uh, a few good ones on Instagram here. We'll flip through them. Sean O'Brien, not, I don't think it's uh, that Sean O'Brien, but Sean O'Brien789 asks, how much did you used to eat in a day? Oh, yeah, a lot. A lot. I'm looking skinny, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I am lo I'm losing a lot of weight. Um, really? Yeah. I just, again, training, I just can't. A lot of muscle, sort of. Yeah, right? a lot of muscle. I would have had to... I suppose I was one of the fortunate ones. The guys, the likes of Dunica, you know, would always give me a hard time because... I had to eat and eat and eat to yeah. try and maintain my weight. Um, so, you know, while Dunica went into the cinema with a bunch of grapes, <laughs> I was going getting the, the popcorn and the pick and mix. But yeah, no, I, I had to eat a lot. I mean, pretty much double what the average man is meant well, to consume on a daily how basis. How does that sort of, the day you quit then, how does that sort of, do you immediately go, right? Well, no, I still find myself still eating, but right. I'm not doing the training. So right. I find that the weight... And I find that I've been busy, I've been up and down the road to Dublin, yeah. um, and you kind of forget. So I don't have to be as professional about my eating, and, and I found that the weight is is really dropping off me. Yeah, you're a shambles, to be fair. You've really let yourself go, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> it's dropping off me before I start going out. Uh, Scott Radisson says, have travel shows prepared you sufficiently for rugby punditry? <laughs> a bit tongue-in-cheek, I'm sure, there from Scott. Well, it has actually been great opportunity. I mean, the TV, yeah. Getting to... The travel part is excellent, but to actually have to go over and talk about a cathedral in the middle of um, in the middle of Ibiza, I mean, my history wouldn't have been the best at the right. best of times. So to have to learn a script, to talk to camera, uh, small things like that, just learning the ropes was was a great opportunity for me. But live television, completely different kettle of fish. Uh, but yeah, it's it's little steps, it's little things. It kind of gave me the 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 taste for it. Yeah. You know, I've done a few bits and pieces. I did kind of a match build up for the Ulster Schools Cup for BBC Northern Ireland a couple of years ago. I've done a few bits and pieces like that, but getting that opportunity to go and have to do a screen test to to audition for it, yeah. you know, lots of things like that is is. Yeah. It's not going to get me ready for live rugby, but... No, it helps. I think it all helps. Of course it does, yeah. It's just the when everybody stops talking and suddenly you're the one yeah. who's got to fill the silence. I, absolutely. <laughs> well, even the ad lib, and you know, it's it's all good being given a script, but to actually be able to mix up off off the top yeah, of your head yeah, to yeah. try and do links and bits and pieces. Yeah. yeah, it's all a learning curve. And, and this is what I love about it. You can't just leave rugby and think you're just going to fall into something. And I kind of have fallen into this in a way, but I've done, I'm in the middle of doing a diploma in journalism. I've right. done, you know, the travel stuff. I've done other little bits of segments. I've done my documentary where I got to interview the likes of Paul McGrath and AP McCoy. And, and actually, you know, those guys are heroes of mine. So to actually sit down and ask them questions about their career and retiring, it gives, you know, it's, it's good learning. Um, 
and and with live sport, of course, I, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be the man straight away. It's far, far from it. But you have to start somewhere, and um, I'm really looking forward to it. Are you in the middle of the diploma? Yeah, well, I've just my thesis to do. Right. What are you doing that on? Uh, I don't know yet what I'm going to do. What are you it thinking? On. I'm putting it off. I'm putting it off. I talk about Brexit and the, right. how it's going to work between the north and the south, and how it's been reported. That's kind of what I'm on, thinking on, of. And uh, duck sales is that the, uh, the duck sales? <laughs> yeah, my dad who's <laughs> up in arms about it at the minute. <laughs> uh, what's your greatest moment in rugby? We'll ra we'll rattle a couple of these and we'll wrap then. Steady as she goes. Asks on Instagram. Uh, it has to be Grand Slam 09. Yeah, big day. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, Colin Kerr on Facebook, which uncapped players who haven't featured in previous Irish squads might be surprise call-ups for uh, Josh Schmidt's World Cup panel at the end of the season? Um, Tough to tell. At the, before yeah, the it is kicked. hard, but I think the likes of Haley coming in from Sale, I think Will Addison, you know, two guys that have come in, uh, there's been all this talk in Munster about Ty Berg come back, uh, about um, Joey Carberry as well come to Munster, but... Listen, I want to bring young guys coming through from the academy. There's a lot of young fellas coming through, getting really good opportunities in that pre-season. Um, and, you know, to see them getting a chance in the first couple of weeks for Pro 14, you know, who knows? I mean, so many people just kind of put their hand up. You don't know where they come from. These young fellas, that's why I had to retire. <laughs> Get out of it. <laughs> young man's game. Uh, and one last one on YouTube here from uh, somebody who hasn't, uh, we don't have their name. What, everybody's doing this these days. Would you consider your, uh, announcing yourself for the Irish presidential race? Hashtag <laughs> President Bold 2018. Ah, get out of it. That's, that's bods for the take in that one. <laughs> uh, Tommy, an absolute pleasure. I've absolutely no doubt that you'll be a raging success in your new role. Best of luck with it. Thank I'm you. I'm sure it'll Thank all go brilliantly much. for you. It kicks off on uh, Friday night. Air Sports' first broadcast is going to be Leinster against the Cardiff Blues this Friday night, made free to view uh, for all Sky Satellite consumers, uh, customers to celebrate the channel becoming the new home of rugby in Ireland. Uh, the game will also be made available to view on Air Sports Facebook, Twitter and YouTube social media channels. That's it from us for the minute. Wednesday Night Rugby on Off The Ball with Air Sport. Watch Cardiff v Leinster free to view on Air Sport 1 and Air Sports Twitter and Facebook pages.